Okay, here we are in part three now of the Learn How to Podcast 101 video tutorial series. In part one, we talked about an overview of how podcasting worked. In part two, we talked about tagging your MP3 files. And now we're ready to talk about equipment options. And we're gonna go ahead and get started by talking about how I got started. I wanna let you know, first and foremost, I am an audio snob. Now, many of you know this because you listen to Podcast Answer Man and you know that I am an audio snob. And I really believe in producing the best quality audio sound that you can possibly get out of what you're doing. But I want to let you know that even I had very humble beginnings. In fact, what you see on the left-hand side is the exact laptop that I used the very first time I started the podcast. And over there on the right-hand side, you'll notice that that is a headset with a little boom mic off to the side. And I want you to pay special close attention to the fact that that is not a USB port on the other end of that. My friends, that had a 1 8 inch jack that would plug into your microphone jack and a 1 8 inch jack that, that plugged into the headphones. And, and by golly, I plugged that in. I used Audacity free audio recording software and I got my podcast launched. If there's if there's nothing else you get out of this today is it doesn't matter what you're trying to do, my recommendation is that you make yourself a goal that if you're if matter of fact if you're podcasting as a hobby, if you're just just dipping your toes in the water and you just want to play around for a little bit, make yourself a goal to have a podcast launched and and put online and submitted to all the podcasting directories out there, the, or the three main ones anyway, within the next seven days. Seriously. If you are if you are thinking about podcasting and you want to actually represent a brand or you want to get a little bit more serious and you want it to sound great and, and, and take it to the next level, build a community around what you're doing, then I would not recommend starting out with equipment like this. But however, I do want to say that I would still recommend that you try to start a podcast and launch it within the next 30 to 60 days. And that is very possible to do uh, but but I just want to let you know, you're going to hear me uh, talk a lot either here or in other places about equipment and, and quality sound, but I want to let you know, you can go pick up, a, and in fact, today you can get one of those headsets uh, with a USB port on it, and it probably will run you somewhere re between $17 to $35, and you literally can start podcasting uh, from that. Technically speaking, if you have a built-in microphone on your uh, computer, you could start a podcast with no money down. All right. So, so technically speaking, that could happen. And I'm I'm going to let my audio snob just keep its mouth shut. All right. So the one thing I do want to recommend is that when you are thinking about buying some equipment, I want to recommend that you stay away from condenser microphones in a studio setting. Now, I happen to be using a special microphone I'm going to talk about in just a minute, but I want to give you a, an idea of what the difference between what I'm using, which is a dynamic microphone, and what a condenser microphone would sound like. Now, I am actually going to use my dynamic microphone to demonstrate this, but the audio sound will sound the same. So here we go. All right. So if I had a dynamic, if I had a condenser microphone, this is what it would sound like. You hear... Uh, the fan kind of blowing in the background. You hear my my voice echoing off the walls in here, and I certainly don't sound nearly as professional as if I was uh, using a dynamic microphone. And of course, you know, I'm going to rub my hands together. You know, if I if I ha I don't have a pen to click, or do, you know what? Do I have a pen to click? Watch this. All right, so you get the idea, right? So don't use condenser microphones. What happens is condenser microphones are basically microphones that are going to pick up anything and everything in your studio. I mean, your computer fan, uh, the dog scratching the fleas off of his back. I mean, everything is going to come through. So I want to uh, recommend that you stay away from the condenser microphones and if you're looking at buying equipment to kind of take your podcast to the next level I'd recommend stay away from condenser and go towards dynamic uh, the most inexpensive one that I would recommend is about 99 to 109 dollars uh, you can find it on Amazon just look for sure s h u r e sure sm 58 
I'm going to uh, tell you, so you saw my humble be beginnings. This is my studio, uh, what it looked like before, what my studio looks like right now. And so you can see certainly things have changed from my humble beginnings to what I have now. And if you are interested in seeing what my studio looks like right this very moment, then I encourage you to check out podcastanswerman.com slash new studio. Once again, a free video on my site that will give you a, a, a very good view of every single piece of equipment that's in my studio. All right. Now I want to tell you about my favorite uh, microphone in the world. And it is the Heil PR40 broadcast microphone. My friends, if you are serious about podcasting, I highly recommend the Heil PR40 microphone. And I'm not going to try to sell you on it here. I have another free resource for you at podcastanswerman.com slash HeilPR40. All right. You, the URL is there on the screen. And I want to let you know that you can listen to that episode and you can hear me put that microphone side by side with other microphones. You can listen to it. I highly recommend that you do so with headphones on. All right, so the Heil PR40 microphone. Now we're talking about a serious microphone there, my friends, and and uh, and and so you can check that out, Heil PR40. Another thing that I want to tell you about is my second, uh, you know, secret weapon in in awesome podcasting, and that is the Edderall R-09HR digital audio recorder. You can find out more information about this at podcastanswerman.com slash Edderall. There is a free video that introduces the Edderall. However, it is, it is a sales page for an Edderall tutorial that I have. Now, I want to let you know that the, what you're looking at on the screen right now is discontinued. They no longer made this, and it was a very sad day for me when I learned this. However, there is a replacement for it, and it is called the Roland R-05. Now, don't ask me why something newer actually rolled back in the numbers, but it's the Roland R-05 recorder, and... Um, I was very hard on the recorder as far as, you know, giving it my real, honest, authentic reactions. I think it's at podcastanswerman.com slash R05. I want to let you know that I have a Roland R-09HR and I also have a Roland R-05. I have both. I use the R09HR to, hooked up to my mixer, and I use the Roland R-05 for all of my out-of-the-studio recordings. Um, I will tell you that today, I absolutely love my R-05. Um, I would never recommend recording into MP3 for anyone. And the only thing I will tell you is that the Roland recorder here, the R09, actually does allow you to record into MP3 and does a pretty good job at it. The Roland R05, its only, only drawback is that it does offer the ability to record as an MP3 file, but it does not do a good job at it. But that's okay because I will tell you right now, you should never record into MP3. Always record into Wave. bring back that very good high quality recording back to your studio, and then turn it into an MP3 file. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. All right, let's talk about the benefits of a digital audio recorder, by the way, uh, instead of recording into a computer. First and foremost, there's no loss of recording due to software crashes. I love that. Uh, no buzz or hum sounds introduced by internal computer components. There, it works great as a field recorder for field interviews. Um, I use them for this thing that I do called walk casts. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pursuing a Balanced Life. Cliff Ravenscraft here. This is episode number 507. And, and listen to that noise. Do you hear that? No, I'm not out here really late at night. But instead, I'm out early in the morning. I'm so excited. Um, it is, uh, it, it's about six o'clock in the morning. First place I'm going to go is to the post office. I have in my right hand two things I have. And, uh, also there's the ability to clearly see exactly what your audio levels are while you're recording. I cannot stress this enough. You can see those little left and right L and R that tells me exactly what my audio levels are coming in. 
And for those of you who have been playing around with podcasting and your audio levels are messed up because one person's louder than the other, the audio clips are just not loud enough and, and you're spending hours trying to do post-production, I, I, you don't have to worry about that when you get it all level and all equal the first time and it makes it so much easier when you record into a, a digital audio recorder. All right, another reason why I love the Edderall so much, it records into WAVE and MP3, although, again, I will tell you, do not record into MP3. Don't do it. Matter of fact, I should have taken that off of there. Anyway, it has the ability to pause my recordings. This is really good because I don't like to edit my shows, and if I feel that I've got a cough coming on, I can actually hit the pause button, cough, go clear my throat, get a drink of water, come back down, and actually pick up right where I left off if I need to. Uh, it's got a very large display for uh, having the audio levels. There are a lot of digital recorders out there, but I'll tell you what, I really love the size of the display on this Edderall recorder. And by the way, the Roland recorder is almost identical to this. I mean, as far as the size, shape, everything, even the menuing system. Uh, in fact, there's some things I like more about the Roland RO5 now. Anyway, better battery life on the Roland RO5. Uh, it, the back, the display is, uh, it, it does not need to be backlit during the daylight, which is really cool. Saves on battery life. Just some amazing things there. But anyway, I digress. It uses an SD card for recording. I love that. Um, see here, it has AA batteries so that I don't have to, it's, it's not one of those recorders that has, you know, that you have to plug in and recharge overnight. You know, if you're out at a conference and you've been out for eight hours and, and you've been putting this thing through the hoops and, and everything. And it, actually, you're, you're on the third day and you forgot to plug it in and charge it the night before because you used it all day the day before. You just pull out a new set of AA batteries and, and throw, you know, throw out the old ones. Or you can use nickel metal hydride batteries. Uh, and, and that might be a recommendation for you if you want to save money and the environment. Uh, it's got an easy to use, to, easy to navigate and easy to use menu system. It's got a line in port so you can bring audio right from your mixer. And it also has a microphone in port. You can actually plug a microphone right into this Edderall recorder if it's a dynamic microphone. Now, it does not have XLR input, but they do make cables that go from XLR into a professional microphone down to a 1 8 inch jack. I, I've done it many times on this recorder. It works great. All right. It actually has great sounding onboard condenser mics. Now, you, wait a second. You might be saying, um, you know, hey, didn't you just say you don't like condenser microphones? You're absolutely right. In a studio where your voice is just going to echo off the wall, you're absolutely right. I hate condenser microphones for in-studio recording. But I recommend that you take this thing out into the field where there's either cars passing by or birds chirping in the tree, you know, trees or crickets out on, you know, the back porch or or you're at a conference and you can hear the rumble of people or you're in the restaurant and you hear the clanking of dishes and silverware paint a picture, you know, and this thing picks up everything and it sounds beautiful. On Onboard condenser microphones are amazing for field recording. And it's also in both the RO9HR and the RO5 have very low handling noise for walk casting and interviews. This means if you're holding it and you move your hand just a little bit, it's not going to have a really loud noise in your recording. And uh, all of the above and it fits in my pocket and it goes with me everywhere I go, trust me. All right, um, I happen to use a mixer as well. Now, of course, they have all kinds of mixers, and the one thing that I usually get when I pull a mixer out of a box with a client, uh, they they usually look at this and they immediately uh, like freeze. They're intimidated by all those buttons and all those knobs. Well, I have another tutorial. It's called, um, well, currently it's called Inside the Studio. It's actually, I think it's going to be Podcast Equipment 101. Uh, we're doing some rebranding on that one. But anyway, it takes this thing and breaks it down. And if you can just learn what one row of knobs are, uh, or yeah, one column of knobs. If you can learn what one is, you know what they all are. And, it, and it's pretty simple to use. But basically, a mixer is nothing more than the ability to take multiple sources of audio and, and, and mix it down into one single source. That's all it does. It mixes it. So if you have, you know, I can put one microphone directly into my Roland recorder and I don't have to do anything. You know, it just records it. But what if I have two microphones? Well, I don't have two microphone ports on my Roland recorder. So I could use a mixer, plug in two, three. Actually, on this one, I can plug in six microphones and turn them all up and send the one audio signal out of my mixer into my Roland recorder. And all of a sudden now, all six of us can talk 
into professional in-studio broadcast microphones and it can all be recorded into one digital audio recorder. That's what a mixer allows us to do. It allows us to do some other very fancy things like Skype conversations and recording that into our digital recorder and other stuff like that. And that's, of course, called a mix minus, where it's the ability to send an audio output to a certain device, which would be Skype, that contains all of the audio from the mixer except for that one device. So for example, if I was bringing Skype audio in, so I was listening to the person on Skype, I bring them into my mixer so that it, it gets recorded in my digital audio recorder, but I don't want the person on Skype hearing their, their voice back a half a second later. That becomes too distracting. And so, and, and usually they can't even talk when that happens. And so you gotta get rid of that audio loop and a mix minus allows you to do that. And again, I do have a tutorial that that goes through all of that information. Um, just some other equipment out there. Just, I mean, obviously there's a lot of different ways to bring in uh, live calls and interviews uh, for your podcast. My favorite thing is the JK Audio broadcast host. I do have a blog post at podcastanswerman.com slash JK Audio. Again, that's podcastanswerman.com slash JK Audio. Um, but yeah, so you can actually take in live calls. In fact, I think if I, if I wanted to, I could actually bring this up here and hit a button right there. So I have one of these devices and it allows me to dial out or take a call in. All right. So, um, if you're interested, this is just some of the equipment that I have in my studio, uh, right here. Um, and I'm not going to go over all of this stuff, but I just want to let you know, this is how it's all hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> right there. That's how it's all hooked up. Now, here's the situation. If you want to learn how what all of those pieces of equipment are, how they're all used, and you want to actually take what you see there that absolutely makes no sense whatsoever, but within you know an hour and a half, actually knowing exactly what all of those lines are doing and why they're all there exactly the way they are, and understanding it yourself, that would be my other video tutorial that goes very much into depth and it's not 101 level. So uh, one, it, it's, at least it's not podcasting 101 level. So there you go. But I do want to go ahead and give you some idea of how much different options would cost you. And uh, we're going to start things off with the internal microphone option on your laptop. I highly advise against this unless you are podcasting as a hobby and you're just trying to play around with it. And of course, that option is free. Another option would be this. All you need is a telephone. Again, this would be a free option, but I want to let you know about podcastanswerman.com slash audio snob. Again, that's podcastanswerman.com slash audio snob. And, and the reason why I bring the telephone up is because it is possible to podcast and actually do a real authentic podcast subscribable via RSS with nothing more than a telephone. And you could actually use a service like TalkShoe.com, BlogTalkRadio.com. I highly advise against using a telephone to produce a podcast. And if you want to find out why, PodcastAnswerMan.com slash AudioSnob. Unless, of course, again, you are looking at doing this just as a hobby. Now, the next option, I'm still going to give you a great option, especially for those of you who are just starting out. Even if you want to do a professional podcast and you just want to start out, if you happen to have a iPhone, or even an Android device out there probably has some recording applications that'll work for you. But on the iPhone, my favorite is the Griffin iTalk application. Of course, if you go into the App Store, you are looking for iTalk, I-T-A-L-K, and it's only $1.99 for the premium version. And I do recommend the premium version. It's not gonna give you the same quality as my digital audio recorders that I love so much. But for $1.99 in equipment cost, if you already have the iPhone or an Android device, it's a, it's a pretty decent uh, way to get started. All right. And of course, then there was the option of the uh, USB headset. Remember, I told you actually you want to find one that's USB and not the 1 8 inch jacks there. But you're looking at approximately $30 to $35 there. All right. And then, of course, you could go with this. This is a Behringer 802 mixer. Uh, tabletop mic stand, a Shure SM58 microphone. You're going to need some cables to hook all that stuff up. Anyway, you should expect to pay approximately $200 for that setup. Of course, that's with recording it from that mixer into your computer system, which uh, I'm not a huge fan of myself, but it could be a great way to get started. Of course, you could add 
whatever it costs for a digital audio recorder on top of that, and then you've got a really good setup for you starting out. And of course, there is the Roland R-05 recorder, and that is $299 with the power adapter. I just want to let you know you'll find it cheaper all over the place, but those are going to be selling it without the power adapter. You need to go out and get the power adapter for it as well. I do want to let you know there are other digital audio recorders out there, some of them as cheap as $99.00. Personally, if if you're going to spend $99, why not save up an extra $200 and just wait until you can get a Roland R-05 recorder. I think you'll be much happier if you did. Otherwise, I know for some people, they can't wait. They got $99 in their pocket and they want to go out and get started right away. I won't pull it up on the screen, but I can tell you if you do a search for a Zoom, Z-O-O-M-H-1 recorder, I guess you could start there <laughs> and you can tell how I feel about those recorders. But anyway, I really like the Roland R05. And then, of course, I want to let you know if you head over to podcastanswerman.com slash equipment, my site is always being updated with my recommended equipment and certain packages that I sell. I am thinking about adding some individual pieces of equipment with tutorials included but I do have some equipment and packages over at podcastanswerman.com slash equipment if you want to check out some of those things there. And the one last thing I want to mention here is podcastanswerman.com slash studio setup. Again, that's podcastanswerman.com slash studio setup. It's a great tutorial for helping you to understand advanced, complex information on how to set up a professional sounding podcast with professional gear. And if you're interested in checking it out, it's over at podcastanswerman.com slash studio setup. And my friends, that is going to bring us to the end of part three of this video training tutorial series. And I hope that you'll join me in part four where we are going to talk about website and media hosting recommendations. I'll see you there. Thank you.